<laughs> so we are snapping images from a webcam, displaying the live feed in a viewer window, and you can turn on live image processing, in this case binarization, I can change the live protocol. How long did you take to do this? It took one day. Uh, hi, my name is Igor Small. I come from the Netherlands, from Erasmus Medical Center. And I came here to actually to learn and uh, get to know the API of IC and how to develop plugins, uh, uh, make some nice uh, implementation of our old code in Java. I implemented the reconstruction algorithm, for which is kind of deconvolution for microscopy. For IC, it works now with a nice user interface and nice tooltips for the biologist, and it also runs in a headless mode, can do, can be run in a cluster. So now I can easily put my code to IC, all the previous uh, uh, algorithm that we've been developing can easily be translated with this knowledge now. So we can also run it headless and then it takes the same input image and output image and then after some time it produces the, the result which is saved on the hard drive. Yeah, so it's done. Thank you. Yeah. Um, I'm Daniel from the Biomedical Imaging Group from Lausanne, we're from EPFR. So our projects are all about snakes and user interaction. So here we have a, an image of uh, um, yeast cells. So for example we can add a snake here, we can, uh, the user can uh, place it where he wants and then he can segment it. So this is what we already had, now if you have several snakes that are segmented, for though here for example we have four cells that are segmented, let's assume that the user wants to analyze these shapes because these are parametric spline shapes. I have added this functionality here that I call shape lab. When you open it you get this interface which is uh, done with a library called uh, jfree chart and now the goal is to analyze these four shapes here in this uh, uh, new uh, let's say shape lab the user can see the parametric shapes here he can maybe do some eigen analysis later get some parameters out of it i want to add user interaction so for example he just played a little bit with the functionality it's, it's not yet as it should be but it's just for me to get familiar with the library uh, so this is one of the projects i've done the other thing i was uh, discussing with stefan the other day was uh, improving the user interaction of our 3d snakes so for example this is uh, some kind of uh, spherical uh, 3d snake that we have to segment the blob like structures like so stefan really helped me to to uh, make things faster in terms of for example moving a snake to or displace the snake or for example if you go over a control point you can drag it and you can this uh, kind of uh, change the shape and all this was was implemented but in a very inefficient way so Stefan could help me a lot on this so now as you can see it's, it's really really fast it's absolutely uh, intuitive for a user to modify so there I'm, I, I think I, I am absolutely happy with, with the outcome of this workshop <laughs> and I, I hope there will be a, another one next year. Welcome everybody, I'm Piotr Dzisuan, we're coming from uh, ETH University of Zurich and uh, at the IC Hackathon we've been building uh, plugins to integrate OpenBIS which is a data management system that work with uh, IC. So the goal of the hackathon was to build uh, plugins that would integrate with the microscopy technology in OpenBIS and would allow you to download uh, images stored in OpenBIS, process them in IC, and maybe in the future store them back in OpenBIS. We are connecting to an OpenBIS instance that runs the microscopy technology. So I'm now connecting to one of the production instances of OpenBIS. And what you can do here is that you can select a sample and download the images that are related to this sample. So before you download it, you can pick a place where the files will be downloaded. Okay, you see that it's here and that's the image that is coming directly from OpenBIS. Uh, we built uh, the blocks for the 
protocol and you can just specify here the, the address, the user that should be used, password and where the file should be saved. So this is a config node and then here you have a node that imports the images, the data. As I so in the microscopy case we just pick a sample as in the plugin and in this workflow I would just open the, the the files that have been downloaded to show that it works. So this is what we have done during those three days. I hope you liked it and hope to see you soon when we will build some plugin to save the data back to open this. I'm just discovering I see on I'm really that by all the features including the software. <laughs> I think people are very good because they are able to sort almost all the problems around. So yeah, because I see you're doing it. Yeah, exactly. I, wa you can I just was just thinking to be very busy on IMOX, so Meaning the maybe, API maybe is because okay. the software is too nice. <laughs> <laughs> people don't even need it. <laughs> You don't need help? Uh, so my name is Perrine Paul Giloto. I'm working in the uh, Institut Le Curie CNRS in Paris. For example, if I look for um, ELA cells, then I can look for the cell corresponding to the project which I have access, which corresponds to that cell. And uh, I'm going it. Get it to me where it comes from. And this is just like if you want to process that you can also uh, upload back anything and uh, put some label. And then what I did also is now you can have um, both download some images, upload them back. So uh, I could run it from the box. I run it already uh, from here and then it was uploaded. I could show you. But the thing is that you can also launch it from the command line. Soon. And this is for now, it's just on my computer. And that will run uh, for my computer. This is going to take some time. Okay, now it's finished. So he has told me that he has processed the image. Uh, this is the main interface. Here I have some um, light microscopy images with some uh, face contrast image and some uh, fluorescence image that you can see in green. And here, that actually exactly the same cell, but in EM. And this cell is here and here. So the scale is kind of uh, different. Two point place for now. Place the third one. So it's a very nice uh, functionality. In, uh, I see that you can use in order to to synchronize the thing, which is very useful, like when you want to register images, where you can see exactly where are the points and the difference between the points between the two images. So, on here, I'm just displaying also uh, two information, which is the difference in position between two points, you know, like the red circle here, and a predicted error uh, based on the configuration of the registration points in a range here. Yeah. And uh, you can also get a full map of the error. Okay, in this area, I have less than 100 nanometers of uh, error of two images. I'm just going to place my points. I pick place. My points are going to be placed in uh, in 3D. So I just have to find back uh, which one are the same points. So, for example, here. Then, if I look now to the 3D view, uh, this one have been transformed to the same uh, to the same. Uh, place that it was here. And that's it. <laughs> I'm going to show you an object background separation that allows you to extract the object so you can also have a segmentation, do some statistics about it, and the background component. So I worked on the parameters, uh, like this you have advanced parameters, you can use it on 3D image sequences, the output or your background component look like this, so it's pretty it's pretty good, except when you have a big region, then you see that it's interpolated. Your object component. Nice. You can visualize it in 3D. It's always nicer. So you have your 3D rise here. And another thing that I did, I um, worked on the protocol version. So I used the plugin. I put the ROI statistics on the ROI and uh, I save it. So you can run it, obviously. This is your input. Same one. Then you can have some statistics about your ROI.
coordinates of the, of the rye, you know, with height, sphericity, sphericity, etc., etc. And that's it. Hello, I'm Susanna from the Biomedical Imaging Group, uh, EPFL. Um, recently, we have developed a plugin for uh, spot detection. So, for image analysis, so people are using in general the daily wavelength. But the problem is the interscale details are diffused among the wavelength coefficients. And if the size of a blob um, relies between two scales, then it's difficult to extract it uh, properly. This is my plugin, the scale of the detector. So here you can choose some different options and then the user can, can run the detection. Here, those are LS spot images and the size of the objects uh, vary in a huge range, so you can see that we capture uh, some small spots and the big ones as well. So with the software, you can easily add some extra spots if you want. And you can also delete the spots if you are not satisfied. Or if you you want to add, then you can just also like drag them, and then you can see that the size of the circle follows the the size of the object. And all the computations are are done uh, behind the scenes, so it's all automatic. Hello, my name is Jonathan. I come from the Observatory of Lyon. So I came here to finish developing my uh, plugins, my decon deconvolution plugin and blind deconvolution. So it will work with an image that is here and the PSS that is hidden because I don't have uh, enough, enough space. And uh, if I run the, the deconvolution, you have the result in real time. So here you have the original. And this is the, the new image. Uh, hi, I'm Fabrice Cordelia. I'm coming from the Bordeaux Imaging Center, where I'm uh, a cell biologist uh, reconverted into what is called an image uh, analysis, um, an image analyst. So the main issue is when working on several uh, software is to make software communicate. And the plugin I've been working on uh, for IC uh, during this coding uh, party is a plugin that allows importing the region of interest created under the Metamorph software into the IC software. And I'm quite glad because after two days of uh, intensive programming, I successfully made it. So here is a short demo. So you first start it you only have uh, two things here a box to choose the find so and look here ah I didn't select it a find so I get a message okay let's select a find this find is a text uh, a test find I open it that's fine I run it and oh no I'm missing an image okay so now let's create Let's create a dummy image, and if I re-click on play, look, I've got my rows. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, our goal to this uh, IC cloning party was to uh, implement an um, image plugin from uh, Daniel, which is called uh, Log Detector. So this Log Detector is working in 3D, but it's only using one scale, and the goal is to uh, translate it, uh, implement it um, into uh, IC and to make it multi-scale. It makes the log onto the, all the 30 slices, but actually, as you can see, it's not working. So. I hope it will, uh, it will work until the end of the day, maybe. <laughs> One of the big points that was really interesting in this coding party is the fact that everybody wants to use all possible systems. They want to write plugins, they want to write protocols, they want to write scripts. Good. It's actually forcing us to, uh, to give good practices on how to write the code in the proper way that everybody can use it at once in all possible ways so uh, laying this all out in a, in a proper way is something was really interesting it seems that uh, yeah the, the, the system is maturing quite well so uh, which is a very nice system in, at the end of the day that works in all possible ways with a lot of interactions I developed several plugins for uh, so for making the connection between image and I see uh, one of them which is here it's this import Lena <laughs> 
I would like to show this uh, PSF generator. So it's an old plugin that I have converted to, uh, to IC. So the goal of this PS, uh, PSF generator of this plugin is to generate a PSF with different kind of models. So we have a lot of models. Uh, I can run it. Okay, there. I do not set the parameters, so it's start to run. It's computing for uh, six, uh, 65 frames here. And it generates the, the nice, the nice PSF like that. Okay, in IC we have a jar file, and this jar file, it's, it's for me, it's common in uh, for IC and image. So the same, same jar files, in fact, run also in uh, in Fiji or image. Okay, what is it? So it looks, it looks exactly the same. Okay, and I can generate, okay, probably it's not the same parameter, so I can run the same things. What I did during these three days was actually a wrapper that makes uh, Imbuli2 library accessible from within IC. That's now reported to Climb, Imedia Ops, Imedia 2, Imedia 1, and now IC. So the wrapper itself is actually a simple set of class and you would do something like that. Simply take an IC sequence and wrap it to uh, an image, uh, sorry, an Imgrip2 structure. So from now on, you have access to all the Imgrip2 structures. One of the Imgrip2 core algorithms, and for instance, just uh, the Perona and Malik and isotropic diffusion. You can simply run it and so you get Imgrip2 based and isotropic diffusion. So of course, you know, there's already something like that that exists in IC, don't want to duplicate it for too much. One of the main interests of Imgrip2 is that it's dimension agnostic. And so for instance, you can say, hey, take the C dimension as a third dimension and compute an isotropic diffusion along that for free. So what I've been doing during this hackathon, um, my goal was to import a plugin that we have in ImageJ to IC. And basically, the plan was to extract all the parts of the plugin that are ImageJ dependent to make them generic enough to be used both in IC and ImageJ. And at some point, I needed to use complex types and uh, Fourier transforms. So instead of just re-importing uh, an ad hoc uh, complex class that I created some time ago, I just thought that I could use uh, some types that are already there. And uh, therefore, I started to interact with some other people to know how to yeah <laughs> to to know how to use this imglib2 thing it's not completely easy but i i think i think it's a it's a pretty cool competence to have because i mean that's something that is totally new for me and i'm learning how to use that so hopefully in the end my code will be both usable by ic and imagej plus it will rely on imglib2 things and i had absolutely no clue how to use that before coming here that's so, a good achievement. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's the end of this calling party, so we like, uh, well, I would like to thank first uh, those two guys, Stefan and Alexandre, because it's uh, been very helpful to you. We are was traveling everywhere. And uh, thank you guys for coming in here, and uh, I hope that you will come back uh, next time and that you learn a lot of things. So thank you very much.